Ma'am, it's gone now. Good morning, everyone. And thank you for joining us from all around the world. I would like to welcome you all on the webinar of on the webinar on ensuring sustainable self-development. I would also like to welcome our esteemed speaker, Ms. Poonam Bharga, PMP Director of Vandana, the Learning Academy. Poonam Bharga is a science graduate with a master's in education. She is internationally certified global career counselor from the University of California, Los Angeles and Univred, Singapore. She's an author storyteller and self-tutored psychologist and an entrepreneur. She, she was a national level debater, best actor during her college days, an experience that she continuously impart in her students by honing their communication skills. Over her complete career span, she has been to different roles such as play school principal, corporate educational executive, curriculum coordinator for ASL, uh, sorry, AS. ALS series of Apple, a certified well, well-being counselor, member of International Association Therapist, and she is presently the director of Grell Round Learning Academy, Vandana, in Delhi. Welcome you, ma'am. We are pleased to have you on our panel. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for those kind words. I'd just like to make a correction. It's not Vandana, it's Vinand, the Learning Academy. Vinand. Sorry, sorry ma'am, that's my bad. Uh, that, sorry, Vinan. Sorry, the Learning Academy Vinan in Delhi. Uh, human development is unstoppable. We all know that once we start stood up on our feet, we start walking, we start taking these baby steps, we start getting into relationship. It's keep going next level to another level, and we all tend to experience same emotional level changes and different changes, mental changes, physical changes, and I think is. From as it goes from our breathing, eating, thinking, walking, the development keeps on continuing. As Darwin once said, it is not the strongest of the species that survive, nor the most intelligent species that survive. It's the people who are most adept in the challenges, they will survive. So changing is the part of our life that we all should keep changing. Darwin, as we all know the theory of Darwin, that how he has given a wonderful model that how we re develop these self-actualization from the basic needs and how we difference, uh, take one by one step to on the growth. On this note, I would like to welcome Ms. Puna Ma'am to get us and to show the path of self-sustainable self-development. Welcome, Ma'am. Thank you so much. Uh, you set the uh, webinar in a very correct context. Uh, if we start uh, about, you know, ensuring sustained self-development, there are three words that I'd like to first start with. Sustained. Sustained means something which is consistent without interruption. Mm. So how can we have that kind of a self-development so that our life is constantly evolving and growing? Like how he said, the species, it's not about the most intelligent species that will survive but the species that will continually advance that is going to survive. And so if true. we just imbibe that, you know, be so committed to your growth that it encourages the ones around you. Be so committed to your growth that it scares away the ones that are tempted to drop you down to their level. Okay, so with that, I'm going to start with a presentation and we will see how we can first uh, understand our own selves figure out the things we need to develop and then develop those and then sustain those continuously for our entirety of our lives. So I would just be asking the most important question that everybody asks that uh, when I'm sharing, can you see my screen? Let uh, me know. Uh, okay. I, not now, yet now. Okay, can you see my screen? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So uh, here is this little, uh, uh, you know, visual that uh, we can see an executive holding a watering can. Uh, 
this is a beautiful analogy of uh, we becoming our own gardeners and watering our own lives okay so first let's understand what is really mm -hmm. in our garden of life that we really need to water okay mm -hmm. so what uh, we will be discussing today will be some of these points and you techniques to identify like i just said if we want to develop we have to see that what is it that we are doing like the negative self talk mm -hmm. we need to see uh, how to develop some kind of self reflection uh then what will differentiate us from others self differentiation the three elements of self compassion and how self compassion differs from self esteem since you mentioned maslow and you said that he tells us the the needs that one needs to fulfill in order to reach the highest level of self which is self actualization so self esteem definitely comes in the middle from there we will Ma, see there are so many self involved in the whole process it just seems like that we need to correct so many self parts <laughs> okay since you're talking about self and you can see that there are so many cells like you mentioned okay mm. in this particular image i would say just remove the s from self what are we left with oh the little elf oh see you said the little elf this is what we do our brain constantly removes the s from self and continues making our own self smaller and smaller and we feel that we are dwarfs we are not good enough and we just harbor those negative doubts okay in ourselves so now this webinar probably is an attempt for everybody present here to remember and remind yourselves every day that i want to give back the s to my little elf like you said and become self again okay with that let's just embark straight away so uh, when i said that our negative talk continues okay so what do we actually do and so it's very important to identify what happens and if you can see that you know these are all garbage talks that we do they really don't have any constructive impact on our lives so it could be as simple as you know everyone is probably mad at me we we could be feeling that at certain points or they don't want to be friends with me anymore sometimes you do body shaming and you say i'm fat sometimes we feel that i'm ugly you know so all of these things that continue happening or developing or getting manufactured in our brain is an inner dialogue okay and it is okay. so limiting it is so limiting that it allows us to not trust our own selves we don't believe in our ability we don't uh, acknowledge our potential right so basically yeah. yeah so basically what it does is it reduces our ability to make positive changes in life now uh, could you uh, think of something what it does to one's little elf that that uh, um, actually that all the demotivations that come in our mind that uh, sometimes this pull us down even if we know something then also it's going to be taking us uh, going back down because we tend to like kind of let's say reflect on ourselves it's kind of inner pace that gets in decreased yeah. while we just think of these lovely words in our mind i would say not so lovely but i can't use ugly so so actually what it does it it actually sabotages and seizes our mind mm. you know instead of becoming the katrina kef of zindagi na milegi dobara where we can say hey seize the day we so seize true. ourselves we seize our our inner self so much and we sabotage ourselves so much that we we actually go into a spiral of only thinking negatively so let us see mm. what we do to ourselves mm. okay how mm. how we need to first uh identify that am i in one of the categories that's about to come on so these are the four kinds of negative self talk that we actually as the even the pace of the world is going so fast that we sometimes tend to be it's very hard for us to keep up with them we slow down on our paces also during this time we also we really feel ke okay, how to manage this thing and i think these negative talks are the ones which are highlighting over there yeah 
so uh, so the first kind of negative self talk is personalizing we take everything on ourselves personal narrative is i me myself okay just the egoistic i comes in the personalizing negative self talk so everything here is happening to the person so what what all happens is the person is saying it is not you it is me. the the all the blame that the person takes self inflicted we blame ourselves for everything wrong that happens in our life so all you students kids everybody out there just see if you fall into any of these categories and we'll be very happy if you write that you have identified that what kind of negative self talk you indulge in okay so ask um, yourself can you give little examples related to them so that they can understand it better yes so first i'll just uh, complete personalizing then i'm going to give an example so but they can ask a question that okay since you've asked for an example uh, suppose uh, some students in your class you give them an assignment okay and they have to give it to you and you are the uh, judge you do not mark them very well now three students have gotten together and they have worked on that assignment now one student has this personalizing negative self talk going on in his or her brain so he or she would say oh it got spoiled because of me not because of the other two uh, classmates so the entire blame that person will take on himself but the person can ask if you if the person wants to get out of the personalizing negative self talk that is there any evidence to support this thought has ma'am given any any feedback where the part that i uh, performed in the task was not up to the mark so they do not even go into evidence finding they just take the blame they own it and then they sit and sulk so the negative self talk never lets them really come out of their uh, trauma they can also ask that is it just my interpretation or is it really factual right so this is what uh, we can get out of if we understand that okay i am personalizing it i'm making it i'm taking it as too personal and all the kinds of criticisms now when people take they take it with a personal uh, uh, bit they attach it to their ego and that's what is not very good so here to get out of uh, this kind of negative self talk we can actually come up with an alternative explanation uh, so that that student of yours could have said that uh, the remark that ma'am has given is not because we did not perform well but because she wants us to excel in this particular field okay, i wish so ma'am students can think like that <laughs> yeah this is why we are doing such a workshop that you know you can always see that there is a flip side you know the coin is just not one sided so the flip side is always something that we should be tuning and training our mind to go back to right the second kind of negative self talk that really happens is uh, you know filtering what do we do suppose uh, we both have met over coffee okay and we are we are a mutual admiration club and we are talking good about each other but you give me one critical comment about me okay mm -hmm. i will just magnify on that critical comment oh my god suruchi ma'am she told me that uh, my communication skill has a problem now everything good that you've told me i'm not focusing on that so the positives are out and the negative aspect is very very uh, magnified so this kind of mm -hmm. self talk is uh, again debilitating because you are not focusing on growth you're focusing on regression or it is like you know the the good thing that you can do here is look again the flip side would be don't look at a glass half empty look at the glass half full you know so you start acknowledging the positives that are available for you right if i would go back saying that she said 10 good things for me okay this is my critical evaluation let me work on it so that next time this also doesn't come in our communication okay the Actually, third that, part, i think all kids would be facing also hard and filtering yeah filtering happens quite a lot you know whenever the evaluation time comes for companies for management organizations every time filtering comes they go back home and they crib oh she said this about my work but mm. come on talk about the good things that they also said right in the process okay mm -hmm. so third kind of negative self talk is catastrophizing now it's like the word says catastrophe oh my god the world is going to end this is the worst 
Now, what happens here is, and then again, the, the correct example is someone's dreaming about going to Harvard, someone's dreaming about going to Stanford, and they do not get an offer letter. My world is over. My life is done. There is nothing left in my life now. So the worst comes to their mind and that negative self-talk doesn't let them see at other top tier institutions or applying to those institutions and wanting to see as to where I can take my life. So mm. catastrophizing is you anticipate the worst and you always question again that, oh my God, why it has happened to me? You know, why has it not happened to my friend or to someone else? Why has he gotten in? And then we can, so to defeat this aspect, what we can do? We can ask ourselves again this question that can the worst continue? Can I continue receiving rejections from universities? Should I stop applying? And actually, will I be not okay if these if the present is is something which is a bad news? So will it not will I not be okay in the long run if things go wrong? Eventually, you will find your path. You're going to be uh, taking on something which is in tune with your uh, desire or your dream. But we waste a lot of time thinking about it, getting into our negative self-talk, our inner chatter. That chatter doesn't stop. You know, it goes on. And we uh, are not open to receiving flexible comments. Now, the fourth is polarizing. Now, the word says polarizing, opposites, okay? So it is either black or white. There is no gray. So either it is all good or it is all bad. So if I'm not all good for Harvard, then I'm a failure. Decided in my brain and I will beat myself to it. So that is polarizing. And if we understand that we do this, we can tell ourselves very, very gently that, hey, you are getting into the polarizing talk. Please don't get into the polarizing conversation right now. So with these thoughts, you know, ma'am, what happens? We form our own emotional equation of life. Okay, it's very, very nice to understand that we yeah. fall. Yeah, we fall in, yeah. So we fall into these two categories where uh, we are in the non-acceptance zone. Okay, I mm. cannot do anything right. And, and you know, I'm not good enough. The polar opposite of this is acceptance. I love myself. The Karina Kapoor. I'm my favorite. Okay. May I be favorite. Now, all of you all there, you know, you could actually please figure out whether you are a non-accepting person or you are a totally accepting person. And then you can see if you identify. So this is the first step. Or you could be in between also, you know. So mm -hmm. how about you just write that I am... 20% accepting, 80% non-accepting, or I'm 50-50 somewhere in the middle. Okay. So that is going to first, yeah. Man, with a lot of situation will be like sometime we are moving from non-accepting uh, to acceptance and sometimes acceptance to non-acceptance. So how to maintain this channel of always being from non-accepting to acceptance? Like we can move in this positive rate. How can we do that? Yeah. So that is a very, very good question, which makes me want to go to my next slide. But before that, I would be very happy if everyone recognizes their percentages of where they fall in the acceptance and non-acceptance category. Okay. And if you don't want to share, keep it to yourself. But know that you are doing that particular thing. Okay. You can keep it to yourself. So, uh, so this is when you ask me that question, I'm just trying to say that we can learn to reframe our negative self-talk because our negative self-talk is continuous chatter in our brain and our mind. Mm -hmm. it, it, it is that yapping that continues, but we, we want to silence it. So suppose if, uh, if a student is unable to focus and says, I can't do it, it's too hard. And for anything that happens, you know, so we, that student can start thinking like this, that I can do this by breaking it down into smaller steps. Oh. You know, the whole is looking difficult, but the parts may look a little easy. Okay. So true. So true. Yeah. They are doing better than me. Oh my God, comparison sets in. And comparison is a thief of joy. What can I mm. think? I can think, okay. They are good. I admire their success. Now let me learn from them as to what they do that I don't. 
maybe I will also move towards success. Mm. Now, when people hate their appearances, they are all the time critical of, um, you know, presenting themselves. They are all the time staying indoors, not want creating excuses to not meet, you know. So for them, I hate my body the way I look. I mean, I, it's very difficult to do. Sometimes even we are standing in front of our wardrobes, you know, for a long time to, to look a certain way. But, you know, it's again a very negative self-talk because it is only leading to a lot of time wastage, right? And personal, uh, personal development actually is a sure shot way to save time, you know? So what can they think? They can think that my appearance does not define my worth. Oh, my body lets me do the things I love. Like you remember that comment from uh, in Three Idiots, Amir Khan said such a beautiful thing to Karina Kapoor. He said, oh, you're wearing your mother's watch. So, khadi ka tai ka kaam hai, time dikhana. I don't care whether I'm wearing a branded watch or not. The thing that it is supposed to do, it is doing that, right? So my body is supposed to perform the normal everyday functions for me. Shouldn't I be grateful? Hmm. Right? That kind of thing. I want to say something. Okay? As in 21st century, I think the most of the kids are facing and understanding this point would be really crucial for them, I believe, for the self-development. Yeah. See, all the time what is trending on Insta is self-love these days, you know, how to how to fall in love with yourself, how to, how to, you know, this, this one post that just came out that a Gujarati a woman married her own self is such a beautiful example sent out to everyone that you don't need anyone to validate you. You can well validate your own self first, right? So, uh, so appearance is uh, in the head again, that negative chatter. Okay. And that, that again, personalizing that, Hey, I am not good. I am not pleasant looking. But we can continue to uh, move beyond. So, so now what happens if you've uh, seen the first part of your life and you're taking a job and then you meet your friend in a reunion and you figure out that they are doing very well in their lives, right? But you are stuck at a certain ladder. So then you, I should be further along in my life. Oh, you come back saying, mom, this one is doing so well. My colleague is doing so well. He's moved rungs, but I am here. So for that, you're thinking could be that I am on my own journey. What I can do today is continue moving closer to my goals. So all of this is trying to take us away from comparing. And I'm so stupid. I shouldn't have made that mistake. Everybody says that, you know, we, it is in our inbuilt system. By default, we say, oh, how stupid of me. Okay. So for that, it is, well, I was going to do my best. I did my mm. best that I could. Now, what can I do differently in the future? So that is probably how we can rewire ourselves for these negative self Crucial questions to be changed now in the life. Seems like that. <laughs> yes. We should be mindful. We should be very mindful as to which particular out of the four negative self-talks, which am I doing? And let me check myself at least for one day and then, and then make that into my habit. Okay. So... so <laughs> Yeah, so if I, uh, how will I uh, figure out uh, what I really need to change? That happens think, with self-reflection. This is something I think with this fast changing, I've been mentioning earlier also, this fast changing dynamic world, we really need to slow down and think about sometime, okay, what are we reflecting? What are we doing for different things? How to keep ourselves being on time, being prompt, being are presentable, all these things keep on changing in my life. Seriously, this is something very crucial for me too. So what do you do for self-reflection? How do you yeah. self -reflect? I'll say if anyone being a psychologist, I understand the self is divided into three parts, that physical, mental and emotional. So physically, I really like to see uh, when I need to do my self-reflection, I take a stroll in the morning or think about the things that have going in my mind. And sometimes I really like to, uh, let's say, note down some points that I've just experienced so that tomorrow if I can go back and refer them for the betterment of my life. Okay. So these are, I think, self-image is the most important, crucial thing. <laughs> and so keeping it is so hard. 
So you said something really nice that if you can see this person is looking at a mirror, okay? Mm. And mirror can be uh, sometimes, uh, it, it can be your best friend, it can be your worst enemy, right? Because if you are doing self-reflection, then it is your best friend, okay? Mm. You made it very easy for me. So if, if the physical self is something we need to reflect on, then we should be seeing ourselves that, Am I getting tired? Am I getting, uh, do I get palpitations? Do I have anxiety? Uh, uh, am I not exercising enough? Okay, so you reflect on your physical self. Likewise, you reflect on your, your mental self. That am I losing focus? Is there anything that constantly keeps me occupied? You know, and, and then comes the most important part, which is emotional self. So, uh, am I even able to identify my emotions? So if you don't identify your emotions, then how are you going to label them and how are you going to treat them? It's exactly like if the doctor doesn't diagnose that you have acidity, mm -hmm. he can't give you an antacid. Mm. Do not recognize that within you, you have anger. And that is what you're giving because what you have is what you can give. So if you recognize that emotionally I'm angry, only then can you make yourself calm right? So how do we develop self-reflection? And it is one of the things that you said really can be done in three different ways, okay? So for example, if someone's taking a nature walk, you know, you, you are with yourself, maybe you are wearing headphones, you're listening to your, to, your, to your music, but you can feel the discomfort in your body if there is any. And do not, so my only advice here is do not ignore it. If there is mm -hmm. something that you feel in your body needs addressing, we should at least go and address that. Like how we will be addressing our mental issues, we need to address our physical issues. So, so when we listen to our thoughts and feelings, our body is talking to us. Our body is telling us, hey, you reside in me all the time. Okay, So keep me fit and fine. Likewise, keep my mental uh, health fit and fine, right? So if there is something that you need to go talk about your therapist, at least you can write it down that this is what happens to me. And then only mm -hmm. the fixing can happen in a better manner. Um, self-reflection, you know, if you, if you say that there'll be people here, they'll say, oh, I don't have time. I'm very busy. I don't have time for self-reflection. To them, I can say, please wake up 30 minutes before your usual time <laughs> and, and just do nothing. Just do nothing. <laughs> Fix yourself a cup of coffee and pick up a good book. Just read that. Be there. Some some thoughts will get inside and will make you reflect better. You know, and uh, or this is uh, a very very nice exercise. You know how to detach yourself from everything. So after a uh, hard day of work, you can come, shut all lights of your room for five minutes, so that you can't see a screen. You can't see anything that can distract you, and then you can actually think. You can. You can, when you're not seeing anything, you can silence all your thoughts on external objects. So it's a very nice way of disengaging with the external world. So when you disengage with the external world, only then can you engage with your own internal world, right? And that is going, that is called introspection. I'm going inside to introspect as to what needs to be fixed. That is beautiful. And if we add more and more time from five minutes to 10 minutes to 15 minutes, this is nothing but what people call meditation, mm -hmm. right? With your eyes shut. You are visiting your internal mm -hmm. parts always. I'm self-evaluating can... ourselves consciously. Yes, 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 yes. Very, very true. You're self-evaluating. And, you know, sometimes what happens, uh, there are so many emotions that we hold in our bodies because uh, someone uh, one month ago told me something which I'm harboring for a month in my body as emotions which can develop into diseases, okay? So how about I reflect on some past events or some past conversation that people have said unconsciously to me and I am just, again, doing what? Personalizing. So let me actually assess a past event that, I, that is troubling me. And then I can say, well, let me release this because I will again say, say the same thing. Okay, my friend did not speak to me nicely or my girlfriend did not behave with me nicely. It is fine. I'm hurt, but I can indulge in a dialogue and try and let it release 
from my system. So what has happened? You've done two things. You have addressed one issue and you have allowed yourself to be, ex to be the one who is not holding a grudge back, right? That is self-reflection. And then you can think about a particular habit that you don't have and you want to inculcate. So with that, you can continue making yourself better and better. Okay. Now, uh, we have all developed, I got it. But yeah, that was, about, I think I was about to ask that what after this will be there? What will be there? <laughs> okay. So, uh, so yeah, so um, it's, it's exactly like, you know, uh, the doctor has given me a prescription. And my prescription gets done in seven days. Okay. After that, I don't have to take my medicine. But the doctor has given me some do's. So it's like maintaining self-reflection. So which means if I have started doing like jogging and sitting in a dark room and listening to my thoughts, okay, and addressing, I need to maintain that. So basically, I have to ask myself routinely, like daily, monthly, that am I doing everything internally for my own self because no one will mm. no one will suruchi ma'am is not going to come to punam ma'am and say ma'am are you internally okay no you're right i have to do it for my own self so what are the questions mm. that i can ask myself so i can say mm. okay what habits did i achieve this week so if i'm not a, a voracious reader can i start with just reading maybe three pages a day and become better at reading. So some habit mm -hmm. which I don't have, mm -hmm. I have to inculcate. You know, that's the last point of the previous slide. Then I can also mm -hmm. ask this question. What could I better improve on? Okay, my talking? Am, am I snapping? You know, what is it that I have to make okay in my system? If I'm sleeping more, can I sleep less? If I'm waking up late, can I sleep a little? Can I wake up a little early? Maybe start with five minutes and make it better. How did I feel overall today? Now, this is very important because this is taking an x ray of your feelings, your thoughts. What is it that your body is telling you? Okay, so that x ray of thoughts is very, very important. Now, you had a very good point there that we've understood, identified. We are making changes, we are maintaining. But let's see what actually self-reflection will do okay so gaining from self-reflection mm. so what do we gain first we will embrace our past to our advantage whatever we are holding we can release we can release and we can become lighter so it's like a computer memory you're holding a lot of your past you do not give enough processing space to your computer to to work faster you empty your trash so that's why that's uh, akin to emptying the trash of our brain. We empty out the trash, our, our, our thoughts are less uh, present to disturb us. And mm. our efficiency, our self-development and our growth becomes better. Okay, so that is the first advantage. Then we get to know our core. Okay, so today, so I did not know that I had the strength or the courage to talk to someone whom I was fearing that I can't broach a certain topic with. So you examine yourself and you say, no, I am courageous and I can fix my own little, little issues that I'm having and collecting in my life. Okay. So mm. you become more peaceful and you return to a secure you. And the third thing is that when you do an examination of your internal self, you come to face with your fears your limitations. Okay, I'm not feeling confident to go to my boss. Okay, I'm not feeling very confident to tell my mother a certain thing that I'm feeling. Now, when you face your fears because of your self-reflection, you will get content to talk about because you have never reflected, so you don't know what is happening to you. It is looking something like a vague thought in your mind. So what are we doing with self-reflection? We are removing the uh, things, the, the vagueness, and we are getting a clearer picture. The minute we get a clearer picture of what exactly we are feeling, we can express. So expression is going to improve our relationships, right? Um, actually, if you see, we all are unique individuals. Like everyone is a different personality. They handle situations differently. So how would we differentiate among the people 
people that how, what is their self and how emotionally they're going to mind things or how emotionally they're going to handle things how can we differentiate in them very nice okay so so it's a very very good question ma'am so what happens we first what have we done we mm. are constantly removing the s and we are becoming l now yes. when we give back the s and we become self which means we are recognizing that my negative self talk is going to go away mm. then and we have we have identified our core that is when we are going to start seeing as to what is within me that should become magnified for others to say that hey so and so is this like when people talk they say i can vouch for him i can vouch for his punctuality right so the mm. the person has differentiated the person has grown so much as a as that punctual person like like mr bachchan like uh, like akshay kumar for his 4 am waking up you know they have differentiated themselves as self from the normal mass category from the mass from the herd okay so mm. differentiation also is a see differentiation of self okay this is what you were asking so this person is standing out he is mm. he is he is defining to distinguish between his thoughts and feelings and an emotional relationship system because what happens then is this person is choosing to develop his own identity here we are moving towards self identity and you will say ma'am you've got an another self component but that is what we are trying to do because self development is okay what is my self identity if i know my self identity i can sharpen it better okay but if i get irritated at at every rub then how will i ever polish myself right so we don't have to get irritated at every rub so so there are four steps three steps you know uh, roughly that we can we can differentiate a uh, solid sense of self like you know maintain their beliefs and attitudes now who are these people you know who will maintain their solid sense of self how can we do that actually i started making notes because it seems too important to me <laughs> <laughs> i can see that and i was i was about to say that you know you are doing such a good thing okay so um so you know what ashok sir is here mm. you know uh, his uh, i can say that he is one person who has always been a strong mentor for me some someone whose uh, guidance is so holistic and rounded that there mm. will be bias he will give me whether i like it or not the guidance that will be perfect for me okay mm. so i have formed this opinion about him that he goes by his beliefs and attitudes and not to please me mm. just because i've gone to him for guidance so that he has created a solid sense of self where he is righteous where he is not partial or biased mm. okay so that is how he has differentiated himself from other people whom i do not go for guidance okay okay now the second thing is a person can also differentiate himself from others by seeking understanding rather than agreement how oh, how can we do that ma'am okay <laughs> all right so let's take the example of your students okay so everybody is in a relationship right they they have partners they have boyfriends girlfriends so suppose a a a, a boyfriend is all the time saying it's okay to whatever the girlfriend is saying so what is he doing whether he's liking it or not he's agreeing yeah mm. his his word is it's okay it's okay now how about he changes he wants to differentiate his self from what he is normally with his girlfriend and he says he hey, listen i am not okay with this hmm so he is trying to make the person understand his opinion and his choice rather than constantly agree so he is becoming hmm. a differentiator in his thought system and he is clearly moving towards a better emotional relationship right so he he can he can choose to say that well let's agree to disagree that yeah. is 
then what actually happens? a guru mantra for a relationship exactly you do not become the other person's shadow because the shadow is only going mm-hmm. to say yes right people human beings need perspective we can become a uh, fellow travelers rather than becoming mm-hmm. a shadow of each other mm-hmm. just and then that makes you want to fawn you know fawning is like pleasing the other person in a relationship mm-hmm. you should never be pleasing the person right you should be taking mm-hmm. your own stand you should be the def- you and then the girlfriend will start thinking that oh he is not going to listen to everything i'll say say okay i cannot bully him i will much rather present my viewpoint and i will see what his viewpoint is so that will make the relationship more cordial and collaborative right mm. so that is the differentiating aspect i i hope i'm i'm clear over here because you asked yes me. ma'am yes yeah and then how are we differentiating uh to self validate ability to self validate so ma'am you know uh, if if we are having all yeah so if you are having all management students here or otherwise every walk of life okay uh people who become really great leaders mm. okay they have this ability to not seek external validation right they are uh, people who feel and who have the confidence to think that they are uh, they have a, a clear vision and they have they don't uh, they validate their own vision they validate their own thought process and they go about so they do not look for their father to say oh yes you can become an entrepreneur they don't look at their mentor that oh you don't have funds so you can't become an entrepreneur they just collect mm-hmm. themselves because their mission and their purpose is so strong and so driven that they arrange for everything then they do not stop because they are not letting others validate them they are self validated and they move ahead mm-hmm. on that path and that is what we have sometimes seen that people who uh, do not hail from affluent families go go and become affluent themselves because they validate themselves right yeah. and then yeah and then how mm-hmm. should how should you differentiate yourself uh, because uh, when you do something there is always going to be teething troubles so how can you tolerate short term pain just because what you have in mind what you have as your end goal so if you think of your end goal like like i can mm-hmm. give you an example here uh, padman okay akshay kumar played that very important character so what did he have in his mind the long term growth was for the women for their hygiene okay for their for their growth so he went all out to create uh, sanitary napkins he tolerated the short term pain that he faced because of not having the equipment going and learning how to make you know that movie was so beautiful it actually oh elaborated this point that you become the differentiator who's not giving up in the face of adversity like he could have said oh well mm-hmm. i can't create because i don't have the machine to do so but he continued mm-hmm. with persistence so persistence was his quality that he got here right and the persistence of of this man who created this important uh, uh, napkin for us was because he did not did not give up okay and that's why he is what he is today so actually ma'am even i think you also have might have read that uh, maslow also mentioned that how we should focus on the growth and how we should keep on focusing so that uh, even the small failures can be moved toward the growth only and we have to only focus on the growth exactly right right mm-hmm. so and then the ability to self soothe and this is very nice you know so uh, you know uh, when you are uh, really motivating yourself okay self motivation mm-hmm. is is something which very few people have i, I would say people who want who have a a goal who have the end in mind before they start before they begin because this is uh, stephen covey's second habit that mm-hmm. effective people have imbibed within them so if you have the end in mind and if you say well i will do everything in my capacity to reach that but i will not beat myself 
I will soothe myself. Okay, this is also a differentiating aspect. So they stay calmer as opposed to becoming aggressive, which we will discuss in our next session. So uh, it also now now says why is it important? You know this differentiation. So we can see that it increases our confidence. It makes us more congruent. Congruence is that it it is uh, it gives us that glue that you know the our integrity you know within ourselves. No, I stand for this. I will not give up. Okay, and that makes you assertive. And then then you achieve like how you have been talking about Maslow. You reach the highest level, and you are actualizing yourself. Meaning you are becoming that person who is giving back to society, creating jobs for society. then that's when you say oh my god i have the pride of becoming a valuable citizen and i am the one mm -hmm. who's opening up jobs okay so we mm -hmm. the pride is there now let's see how uh, we can actually improve our level of differentiation because we know that differentiation is important okay so what should we do so increase your willingness to self confront Mm -hmm. very very important now this is something like you have to ask yourself what's um, what um, what what are these okay answer the what's okay so see we have five w's and one h which is high okay what who when why uh, mm. where and how so if we if we are confronting ourselves on these five w's and one h like what kind of life do i want is uh, how do i reach there what is this person giving me as value what is the present situation of my relationship where do i need to improve or upon okay or if you answer this you're self confronting yourself you are going to then be able to differentiate in those areas so this is the willingness to self confront the second is don't change based on who you are with like i started saying this that if you are scared to drop to their level you should not be scared to drop to their level because the ones who are uh, complacent the ones who are lazy will not want a hard working student to stay hard working <laughs> they will also try to rub the hard working student and would want the hard working mm. student to become like them okay so mm. do not change based on who you are with you should show accuracy of your purpose of your value that no how can i have to prepare for a presentation and if somebody mm. is saying the two two peer group people are saying hey it it will happen it will happen hey come on let's go for a cup of coffee and we'll come back and attend to it and then after that something happens and they don't prepare the presentation well you don't be that person you show that accuracy no i need to understand what is my role in it and i need to know where i need to speak where you need to speak how we need to thread it together so don't change your value system just because you are with a different person okay so because then you what have you allowed yourself to do the differentiating factor in you has gotten diluted right yes ma'am the third thing is that if you are unable to differentiate between what you have and what you seek or what you need then you can also let a therapist help you most of the times it's very difficult for uh, people to uh understand their own selves you know so there some brainstorming from a therapist from a counselor is a good thing can be helpful <laughs> yeah <laughs> ma'am uh, i want to ask like sometimes the kids really face this trouble that when to go to the therapist the trauma and yeah. is not we should, when should we go to the therapist so uh, this is this question is uh, cannot be answered in one line okay how about we <laughs> how about we take this question once we uh, complete our remaining elements in the slide we will come one, back one, to one. okay so i think what we we have covered so far is the techniques to identify uh, developing self reflection reframing 
our self-reflection and the four steps. Now we just, mm -hmm. we are just left with two things. What are the three elements of self-compassion and how it differs from self-esteem? And that is what your Maslow says as the second last element. So let's look at that first and then I'll answer your question. So what is self-compassion? Okay, mm -hmm. self-compassion is when we are actually very mindful of our, mm -hmm. like I said, when you have done self-reflection, so you're mindful of what you need in your physical, mental and emotional moments. Mm -hmm. When you're aware of that, and then you say that, let me be kind. Let me be kind with my own self, because if I will be kind with myself, I can be kind with others. So compassion is not only for us, compassion is for others, right? And then that is what the common humanity will be if you develop it within. Because then you will relate to other people in and around you with the same emotion that they will have. So if I know that Suruji ma'am is um, a person with whom I can have deep conversations, Okay, mm. philosophical conversation. So mm. I will knock, I will say, hey, hello, can you give me five minutes? I need to speak with you. I need to brainstorm this idea with you. And then yeah. we can connect because what am I seeing here? Common humanity. I am going mm. and seeking my self-compassion with you via you, right? Because I have mm. recognized that my experiences are actually not just for me. I'm not the one who's alone in it. Because it is a normal part of the complete humanity. You also have the same emotions. Grief is not present in one house alone. Everyone's lost someone, right? So if I will have that in my system, then I can approach the person who's also lost someone, right? Mm -hmm. That is what self-compassion can lead us yeah. into becoming very uh, emotionally intelligent human beings who can mm -hmm. have very stable relationships you know, emotionally stable relationships. So let us see by having it, you know, what, what can we do if we have self-compassion? Okay. So uh, we can, we cannot, uh, if we have self-compassion, then can we judge ourselves? Did Karishma Kapoor in Jab We Met uh, ever say that, hey, I uh, love myself over others? She no. did not judge herself. She said, I love myself. So she was very kind. Okay. Mm -hmm. So she was very kind with her own self. So when this mm -hmm. reality is accepted with sympathy and kindness, then the emotional equanimity is experienced. Meaning then she was the one who could tell the guy that, you know, please don't be harsh with your mother because your mm -hmm. mother is also your, a human being. See, these movies sometimes are beautiful reminders for us to see how emotional relationships operate. You know, if she wouldn't have been kind with herself, she would be judging Shahid Kapoor's mother when Shahid Kapoor himself mentioned that she had run away. Right? Mm -hmm. But because she was in terms with this reality and she was kind to the mother, so the mm -hmm. compassion she had for herself made her have compassion for his mother whom he later understood. You understand? So this is what okay. self-compassion will do because you are not going to judge others because you will stop mm -hmm. judging your own self. Okay? The second thing is that like how I said that if I know that you are deep then I am going into the common humanity. I am becoming mutual with you. I am not isolating myself. I am not bro brooding in a room. I am not sulking in a closed door environment, right? So self-compassion involves recognizing that suffering and personal inadequacy is part of shared human experience. Okay, fine. Mm. I got COVID. I am isolated for seven days. It's all right. My friend is, was also isolated. My grandparent was isolated. It's not me alone. It's not isolation. Okay? It mm -hmm. is common humanity. Everybody has faced it. And then the third is mindfulness over Mindfulness versus over identification. So now, mm. you know what you said that, Pam, how can we identify? You said this in the beginning. Mm -hmm. Now imagine, okay. yeah, imagine I am over identifying myself and I'm, and I'm saying mm. that, uh, oh no, 
I do uh, too much of evaluation, I get into anxiety. That is over identification. Now, if I'm mindful, mm -hmm. that, oh my God, I'm about to slip into micromanagement or uh, actually uh, really analyzing it so much that it becomes like a big thing for me, then I am not having self compassion. Self compassion is if I'm only mindful about what I currently possess. Okay. Now, what actually self compassion is not? Okay. Self compassion mm -hmm. is not self pity. If someone you meet is only doing, oh, my situation is so bad, oh, my, and is playing a victim card all the time. Mm -hmm. I face this, I went through this, this is bad in my life, or oh, I have not seen a good time. My God, then you don't have self compassion. You are only playing a victim card. So beware of playing yeah. a victim card, right? Because self pity is it tends to only emphasize your egocentric feelings. I, 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 I. Okay. Whereas what self compassion does, it allows you to see experiences of self and others without the feelings of isolation. Okay. And then actually, may what you can say to those situations, even if the situation is bad, you can say yes. It is very difficult what I'm going through. I have not seen a very easy period for a very long time, but so uh, would have so many people in this, in this common humanity. I'm not alone. I'm not alone. Mm -hmm. in this. There are people who also suffer a lot, right? Um, can, can we get an example for this some, so that we can connect? Yeah, so um, for example, you know, some people, uh, continue seeking attention by self pity. Mm. Oh, I'm sick. I'm sick. I'm sick. Others mm. will say, Oh, I hope you're feeling well. You know, they get their attention. So they are not mm. doing compassion. On the contrary, mm. if they are sick seriously and they mm. feel that they can say that, Yes, I have not been okay in a long time. I have been struggling with my knees or I've been struggling with stamina or, it, or it's long COVID. If they do that to themselves, mm. the compassion, then it is not playing a victim card because they will understand that, hey, a lot many people like me are facing this. So I'm not alone. I'm not singled out. Right? That is what they, yeah, we should be doing. Self-compassion is not self-indulgence. Okay, so now, so don't take me wrong because here I'm giving you only things like don't beat yourself. So you will say, okay, ma'am, I don't want to work today. I don't, I don't want, I just want to take a break and I want to pamper myself. So I'll have a tub of ice cream. <laughs> Wish I can do that. <laughs> but you're, what are you doing? You are self-indulging. It's not compassion. You are not doing compassion. What are you trying to do here? You are mm -hmm. trying to escape self-censure because you know your weaknesses and you're not acknowledging them. Okay. So you are, if you're lazy and you say, so you are lazy, that is your weakness because you're trying to tell yourself, okay, let me be very, very uh, kind to myself because self-compassion is kindness. Okay. So I'm just trying to bring this, this little thing out if before it comes as a question from one of our participants that they will say that ma'am you asked me that be kind so i'm being kind to myself by not working today mm -hmm. i'm deciding that i will not work because i do i don't believe in labor so i'm being kind to myself and and today i will take a break and i will feed myself with all the junk so beware, <laughs> do not do self-indulgence because what you are doing is you are not acknowledging your weakness of being lazy. Okay? So, cool. so yeah, so don't do that. Okay? <laughs> so the third thing that uh, self-compassion is not is it is not self-esteem. Okay, I will give you a very beautiful thing and I am just asking for everybody's uh, attention here, please understand. Mm. Self-esteem is good. Self-esteem you should have. But when you have enough of self-esteem, then sometimes people call you narcissistic. Narcissist. Okay? So Absolutely. let us have a very balanced amount of self-esteem that does not meet the criteria of narcissism. 
right? Mm. So self-compassion actually is, is the turf on which self-esteem can stand. Okay, mm. let's see how. It's very beautiful, okay? So self-esteem is what? So now I can see Suruchi, ma'am, and I can say, hey, ma'am, you know what? I can see that you are, you are, you are right now you've become a learner. I can see that, you know, you are enhancing your self-esteem by becoming knowledgeable, by giving yourself what you need, okay? But if you would have been dismissing me, then I would have said, oh, you are, you, you have this attitude that you know it all and you're not paying attention to what I'm saying. So you are, you are self-narcissist, uh, okay? You are in the narcissist category. You are becoming, uh, no, I know it all. You're going into wow. that school, right? So self-esteem can do this to us. It can make us over it can it can lead into self-evaluation and giving us the superiority. You know, we we get this, this feeling of the head being held high, you know, for those people. And they don't want to come down. They don't want to get off their, their uh, thing that they establish for themselves. So that can be a little harmful. So self-compassion, see, I just said. They self-evaluate themselves, right? So self-compassion is not based on self-evaluation. And it isn't dependent on external factors. Because suppose Suruji ma'am says, hey, I want to be the best faculty. Mm. Self-esteem, which is your self-worth. So you have attached mm. it to becoming the best. And this best. is most of our students who do this, okay? I want to be best in this. Which means if they come second, they are mm. not okay. You know, Not, and, mm -hmm. and here, I mean, if there is any F1 uh, uh, enthusiast and is watching and following Formula One, you know, the seven time world champion Lewis Hamilton, can you see what a beautiful balance of self esteem he has? He comes yeah. out uh, congratulating the winners, not showing mm -hmm. arrogance in his body language, has so much of self compassion for himself, so much of kindness for his own self, you know. So he isn't dependent on the external circumstances and factors or what mm -hmm. people are talking about him. His behavior is very self-validating, something that we learned that he is, or when he reflects on himself, he knows that he's good. He, he doesn't feel that if he's not coming on the podium, he, he does not have self-worth, right? Mm -hmm. So that is the difference between having self-esteem and self-compassion. And mm -hmm. then now we can yeah this is my uh, last slide and we will mm -hmm. just see why self-compassion is healthier than self-esteem okay self-esteem mm -hmm. can be built on self-compassion is what i'm saying so mm -hmm. self-esteem is the degree to which we evaluate ourselves positively how much we like or value ourselves based on comparison with others if if it is driving us to become a better version of ourselves it is all right but if it makes us beat ourselves and we become narcissistic then it is somewhere it needs to be checked, okay? Self-compassion, on the other hand, is how we relate to ourselves, okay? It is, it emphasizes interconnection. And I have explained this example via the job we met example, this Karina Kapoor example. Okay, let's see what self-esteem is. So it is less on emotional stability because it will make you a little arrogant, mm -hmm. right? When you would be wanting to be the best, you would be arrogant. Like, uh, sorry to say, but sometimes uh, the people who cannot lose, mm. okay, and they get into this, this fight with their, their own selves, they, mm. they show emotional instability, right? But the, the people who will have self-compassion will offer more emotional stability, mm. right? And, and life is all about ups and downs. You cannot always be on the top, right? So your self-esteem, if you, if you relate it and if you attach it to, the, to reaching the peak, then, then there, is, there is a danger because you will drop down also. So beware of the danger lying ahead. Then self-esteem is, uh, again, uh, you know, you, you relate it to your physical attributes. Like, you know, mm -hmm. all, probably all celebrities have a high self-esteem when they're in shape, when they're looking good, you know. But self-compassion, it doesn't consider any physical attractiveness, okay? Mm -hmm. I would say Vidya Balan, very beautiful example here, has self-compassion. She isn't running after size zero. She isn't running after how she's looking. She's more focused on what she's delivering, right? Yeah? Mm -hmm. 
yeah self esteem is uh, it has a strong association we've discussed this compassion has no association with narcissism mm. self esteem is you blame others to feel good but mm. compassion you do not blame anyone in order to feel good because you feel good right so i think uh, we have covered everything i would just my closing mm. lines would be please look at <laughs> which category you follow acceptance or non acceptance if you can mm. see this acceptance is it's raining let me not forget my umbrella rather than saying my day is ruined it's all it always rains and my day would be better if it stopped raining right so with that uh, over to you suruchi ma'am if our uh, participants have any queries questions we can really answer them Ma'am, what a lovely presentation! In a way, we learned so much today that how we can move away from this little elf and become a ourselves, a huge human being, and learn how we can be productive. Like so many times, the thoughts of negative thoughts and these all unaccepted thoughts that really I think runs in every man one's mind every day. Like I feel presently also, if something would happen, I will think. oh why it's me why it's me but why i don't think i have taken a learning experience from this how can i be a better person and i think right. there are few questions coming up ma'am let me ask you few like uh, and please keep, keep on asking i think ma'am will answer all so amit is asking how can i avoid negative thoughts okay amit i think uh, the presentation in the beginning only was all about uh, identifying right so mm. first is pause pause and identify what is the negative chatter all about is the negative chatter leading you towards personal uh, personalizing is it catastrophizing is it filtering what is your negative chatter then you label your negative chatter okay once you've labeled then it is easier to try to solve it by whatever little solutions i get what the flip side of it okay so if you identify that your negative chatter was that uh, i study a lot but i still don't get good marks so i'll stop studying oh that is your negative chatter what are you trying to do you have again personalized it that i don't get good marks or my teacher is partial doesn't give me good marks i can change it to this that for some reason even after studying even after really understanding the concepts i am unable to score now let me see what i can do more in order to answer better so that i can score more so you reach that particular part which you will be avoiding and overlooking overlooking which is to make yourself better the development will come when you will go and ask okay how are you structuring your answers or how are you addressing a particular prompt or a particular question so let me change my style and maybe the response and the result will be better you know right so okay. if steps pause listen to negative chatter label the negative chatter and do something for the negative chatter right <laughs> ma'am there's one more uh, participant who wants to know priti priti wants to know that i want to become a dancer how to avoid criticism okay uh it's almost a similar question uh, here uh, criticism can be again taken as uh preeti if you're taking it as personal uh personal uh, criticism then you will have to change again the flip side will be that let me dance for my own happiness mm. let me not uh, yeah let me not see uh and uh, let me not wait for external validation from my audience if you dance for your own self and you you mm. uh, become the person who's uh, who's expressing your creative energy in the way that is best for your own self then i think it you should not be looking for external validation because then criticism uh, uh, you you're not attaching to external factors for criticism right let's change the locus of control <laughs> it should be you not the outside world controlling okay. you yeah yeah <laughs> so ma'am rajan is saying that uh, i am in the 12th grade exam and my exams are going on how to maintain the self esteem even if after i know that i have poorly performed in the last paper 
very nice question. <laughs> Who, who's uh, the person who's asked this? I'm Rajan. Okay. Uh, Rajan, see, we've just, we've done a complete catharsis of, you know, how mm. self-esteem, if not controlled, can go into narcissism. So uh, you have to first see that uh, do, what are you focusing on? Are you focusing on your self-projection? So mm -hmm. if you have performed poorly, you would have performed poorly because of some reasons like not studying well or mm -hmm. uh, not being very mindful while answering those questions which, have, which, which would have been uh, in your exam paper. Self-esteem cannot be linked to failure first and foremost. Mm. If you feel that you have given your best, then this is what we say to ourselves that in this particular situation, I have done my best. Now, let me see what I can do better. Instead Actually. of, yeah, instead of saying that I'm not good enough because you, what you are doing, you are doing the polarizing effect here. You are saying mm. that I have done poorly, so I'm a failure. So don't do that. So don't uh, don't do the negative self talk of I, of the four things that we spoke about self esteem mm. can uh, improve if you are kind to yourself if you will say that let me understand that uh, and let me let me do a self evaluation okay the self reflection that uh, what is it that i left why is it that i have not been able to uh, be in the promised category that I did for myself. When you will look mm. at that, you will get your own answers and you will, you will be able to have your own plan for your life as to where to improve. So when we said now, ma'am, when we were talking about, we said we have to identify the areas of our self-development, yes. right? Hanji, hanji. So when, so how, how about I identify that? Was I really mm. giving myself the study time that was needed? For me to not perform poorly maybe that yes. you have to introspect right um, there are more questions coming up amul sharma wants to know that i'm preparing for judiciary at the time i lose confidence and i want to quit i lack in consistency and keep thinking that while studying that what sh should i do i should i i will not win what will happen so ma'am please can you ha help him to keep his consistency up okay so uh, what is the name of the student? It's I'm Amal Sharma. Amal, Amal Sharma, ma'am. Okay. So, uh, you know, this is a very uh, common thing that happens, you know. We, mm. we keep, uh, we also do this, uh, that we are always attaching our result to if, then, else. Okay. If I do this, if th then, then is fine, but else is always bad, right? So I would say uh, you have to change a little bit of your approach. Instead of going into the far fearful future of what if this doesn't come out true, how about you focus on doing your best? See, we, we, we were in this uh, webinar only we spoke about uh, if I can't handle something that's hard, which is a whole, let me break it down into pieces. So how about you uh, attend to the bite-sized goals first and keep rewarding yourself with, oh, I have done this, I have done this, rather than get pressurized by the big goal hanging on your head, right? So I would suggest that how about uh, dividing and conquering, okay, over here. Yeah. Um, Noor is saying amazing session. <laughs> There is Jyoti Ma'am saying, this is amazing, absolutely amazing session. The girl, there's one, Akriti want to ask something, that how to avoid bully for self-development? Okay, this is also a very good question. So, uh, you know what uh, actually happens in the psyche of uh, someone who's bullied? It is, it stems from the fact that uh, you do not consider yourself worthy enough and you do not feel that you have the courage to stand up against the bully. Mm. Uh, this probably sometimes uh, could be related to childhood issues over here, you know, that mm. uh, you have been always stopped from expressing yourself. 
so you feel fearful in front of the bully that if you will express you will be further bullied so in order to not be bullied again you continue uh, taking it in and you you become quiet okay mm. so the development is not going to happen because uh, you will become so fearful of everyone in your environment that you will perceive you'll start perceiving that everyone around you is a bully and you are the victim so what are you doing you are actually personalizing because you are saying that it is my fault that i am like this that everyone bullies me so you have to come out of that and you have to say that the person is becoming a little impolite the person is not giving me value it's all right i will now develop myself in such a way that the person will not perceive me as timid and weak and mm. will not try to take advantage of my projection because i need to work on my projection i need to work on on the fact that i can i can look at you in the eye because you know uh, the confidence that a person has is only when you can have a direct eye to eye contact if someone is saying something to you and you look down and your body language curls up and you make yourself small then the the bully becomes even more strong so you are making yourself weaker and the other person is gaining all that strength now how can you first become strong mm. and very good exercise you can do you can so there's a there's something called power posture okay mm. you can stand the the way the heroes and the power and the uh powerful uh you know superheroes stand like uh with their hands on their waist they expand themselves mm -hmm. so please um amol amol is the name right please yes, uh, akriti man akriti akriti please practice standing in the superhero posture uh with with your hands on your waist for 2 minutes every day to gain that mm -hmm. confidence to be able to see somebody in the eye and not appear weak in front of them and that is going to start making them get discouraged to bully you and you are going to start feeling feeling more and more confident and courageous to not appear a bully a, a, a person who will be bullied yeah really thank you i'm sorry hum sab questions we, we can't cover all of them so what you have taken are few uh, we'll be taking them later on some session probably you should have a follow up for this definitely ma'am Ma'am, what a lovely experience! I have been a learning seed today. Like, really learned a lot, and really think, start thinking that what I need to change to develop myself, and how to sustain my self development, how to progress. That what things I need to change so that I can reach to the top, but not being so overly confident about it, so that I can uh, destroy my. Way. I think even Mahatma Gandhi said that we must become the change we want to see. so if we are changing and developing i think we can change the world if we keep saying people keep saying that people keep uh, indian people keep throwing garbage on the floor and indian people are like they will, are not that tan hygienic but are we changing ourselves we keep complaining about the things but we should become the change that we want to see and on this note really 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 thank you ma'am for being a part of this webinar and enlightening us with what what i i am speechless actually presently i have learned so much today <laughs> now i can understand that uh, yeah, ma'am you were un so thank you so much for having me and uh, if there aren't if you know i'm just again uh, asking if there are any questions that come up later we can always discuss and yes, um, yeah and i will just you have to have a follow up actually <laughs> <laughs> okay thank you so much All thank right. You. Thank you, everybody, for giving me a very nice listen. Ah, here it. Thank you. On this note, ma'am, thank you so much. On this note, I want to show the participants our visual of the university, that virtual world of our university. Yeah. Uh, so, I'd I'd like to take your leave here because I have another. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye. Bye, ma'am. Have a nice day. Thank you. Thank you. Also, you please have a nice day. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. <laughs> um on this note i will like to take the universe every all our participants on the virtual tour of our university um tahir sir yes ma'am sir uh, the video
So let me present the PPT of the university till the time and we can run. Yes, ma'am. Go ahead with the PPT. Okay. Uh, We are here in the KR Mangalam University. Till the time the PPT get to enroll, let me just introduce you. We have more than 300 students in the university which are enrolled. There are around 11 schools in the university which deals with the various fields of education. There is some network issue that is not playing. Uh, so there are around 11 students and there's a strong alumni of the KR Mangalam campus and KR Mangalam family. We have started with the three schools. We have been ever since growing from the world. KR Mangalam world school is well known and everyone knows about them. Now the KR Mangalam University is one of the best universities in Haryana. It is rated as the, one of the best uh, private university. And in India, it is rated as the second best private university. Additional to that, it is, we focus on interdisciplinary education in a way that, okay, you have taken a B.Tech course, but you have an interest in psychology or you have interest in any other field, like you want to explore the fashion, you can uh, select some courses from them and you can even learn, get enrolled in those and you can get a wholesome experience. Additional to that, we have these many courses available in our university. There, uh, you can get explored even if in, there is a problem. Like for example, you got enrolled. We have a literal transfer facility available in the university, so that you can you can come up to your uh, maximum potential. Um, these are the few collaborations that the KR Mangalam University have with IBM. We are the few big names. Which there are only this the few big names. There are other collaborations also. Uh, we also have. Uh, E Yantra Robotic Lab, in which we talk about the technology, and this is the tie up with IIT Bombay. And these are the few honorable dissenting professors which are there on our panel. We also focus on hands on learning. It's just not that we, as a classroom learning, is a focus for our students. We focus on hands on learning in a way we move more focus on the practical knowledge so that they learn while doing, while experiencing those concepts, not just sitting in the class and just reading through the books. So we have these are the few examples that the students were during the project that we have done. So uh, life beyond the academics, again, as I've been saying, that uh, is the hands-on learning. We even connect upon the community services, the societies, there are different societies and clubs. For example, APJ Abdul Society, there is Rotary clubs, and there are other clubs also, which give you enhance your multiple personalities that give you a full platform for development. We have this mentor mentee program. What is this mentor mentee program? In this, you have been a mentor assigned to you, which will guide you throughout your path of journey with the KR Mangalam. Through and through, you will be having a counselor in with you that will be guiding you that what is right for you, what is wrong for you. Even if you are falling and lacking in something, they will be there to hold your back and make you stand. And in addition to that, we have industrial connects in a way that we have, like for example, we've been mentioning about IBM. We have a program attached to the IBM so that you can be prepared if the IBM are interested. Accordingly, they can train you. There are some international exposure. Our events, our students go for international educational trips. So these are the few uh, examples on the name of the university which students have experienced. The students testimonies, these are the few testimonies of our students. So our university is a uh, highest package for the, yes, internship and the placement is a very active uh, department of our university. So we have uh, the one of the highest paid uh, internship, uh, sorry, placement was of 24 lakhs and the recruitment there are more than even the number is still rising they're saying for uh 400 but it's even still rising the total offers made is now around 800 something 
so the student are paid uh, placement up to 90% that we have got the students and these are through the top most recruiter for example paytm sun sun pharma and kpmg even they are more it just keep on adding there are the few other uh, recruitment which akyar mangalam offers so how how you have to get in this admission process first of all you have to meet the admission officer and then fill the application form then register with us in a way that you will be getting connected with the faculties of kr mangalam and you have to pay the fees and get enrolled in the program this is the fee structure of our kr mangalam university as you can see is in compare to the nearby private universities and in the all over india universities you can see the pay structure that uh, how much we are charging and not so the we even offer the scholarship for the students even 100% scholarship and as they track and different how their performance they we keep on changing the scholarship percentage or if the student is uh, we even offer 100% scholarship if the student is really bright and is performing through and through external externally very nicely so thank you so much if you want to come to kr mangalam you have to contact on number 0114888488 and we will be available be uh, our guest and will be try to help you each and every part and even try, even if you want to know about some courses you can connect to us through the academic teams and all and will be there available for you and thank you so much and thank you so much for connecting with us and it was a nice experience it was a nice experience uh being a part of such a beautiful uh, webinar thank you so much and have a nice day